I was toying and writing up one sermon after another one. And then I, I received a text and it, it touched on something I wanted to touch on today. So today we're going to talk about the Lord's table. Oh, bless the Lord. Isn't it good when God moves? Just, you don't, don't look at the bulletin sometimes. Yes. Healing God. I'm thankful to be here before you on today. I'm thankful that you are here today. Holy is the Lord. Thankful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We can't be turned back. God has his hands on us. He has a plan for us. Let me dive into my text. We got communion coming. It's going to be a short message, but I'm, I'm okay with that. But today I, I want to bring you a message out of the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11. It's entitled The Lord's Table. Some call it communion. Others might call it Eucharist. The Lord's Supper. We're going to speak about the Last Supper. And then we're going to take communion. I'd like to welcome everyone today. We, we deviated from that little bulletin. But guess what? We can do that. What did your neighbor say? We can do that. Whenever we feel like it. Ain't nobody going to give us no whooping, is it? <laughs> it's a good thing. I, I want you to open your Bibles to 1 Corinthians. Chapter 11, I want to begin at verse 23. I'm going to read from 23 to 34. 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 23. Holy Father, I pray that it be fire in this place, that you strengthen, that you heal, that you touch, that you equip, that you move you reach out yes that you life changer let us not be the same let us not be the same give us eyes to see beyond our circumstances and situation give us ears to hear the Holy Spirit is saying the heart to receive your truth let it be well with our soul unto you shall the gathering other people be let the words that come from my lips be out of the head of the Holy Spirit, that you are glorified in them. I ask these things in Jesus' name, the church says. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm going to take you right to the Lord's Last Supper. Here, verse 23, reads as follows, says, And I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he, he broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner also, he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the new testament, or the new covenant in my blood. This you do often as you drink in remembrance of me. For often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink of this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. Look at your neighbor and say, let a man examine himself. So let him eat of this bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak 
and sickly among you, and many sleep. The word sleep right there is reference to people who die. They're dead. It says if we would judge ourselves, we will not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. Tarry means to wait. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that you come not together unto condemnation. And the rest I will set in order when I come. Church of Corinthians is getting checked by Apostle Paul because they was taking communion any kind of way, partying, drinking, and just not honoring the Lord. When you take communion, and communion is one of the sacraments that was given to the church by Christ. Communion and baptism, those are two. Neither one of those two save you, but it's, it's been, we've been told to do so, so we want to be obedient to be baptized and to partake of communion. And any time we do take communion, it should be with the, with the reference of knowing that Christ offered himself up as a ransom for you. His body was broken for you and his blood was shed for you. Therefore, you have been reconciled unto the Father. It's not something to take lightly. Communion is not for your little kids if they don't know Jesus. It's not for infants. It's not for adults if they don't have a relationship with God. It's for believers. Communion and baptism is for believers. And when they say examine yourself, you need to check yourself to see what your heart's been about. Some of you might have envy in your heart. Before you come to partake of communion, you need to ask the Lord to forgive you. 1 John 1 and 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And sometimes it might be just uh, some unforgiveness. Some of you walking around taking with you that God is not pleased with. When you go before the Lord, you want to go right. Look at your neighbor, so when you go before the Lord, you want to come right. So if you have something that's wrong and you know whether or not it is, sometimes you aren't aware of it. Sometimes you need to just have a prayer say, Lord, if I've done anything wrong to offend, any that's ungodly, that goes against your word that I'm unaware of, please forgive me. And make it known to me so I won't repeat it again. So if we don't need to just sit on the sideline. Oftentimes I see some people who, who refuse to take communion because they have some struggles throughout the week. But I'm telling you, God is forever faithful. And if he say, if you confess and believe, he will heal, he will. He will forgive. So you don't, you don't have a reason to sit on the sideline. If you come with a heart cry. But if it's just lip service, look at your neighbor and say, God is not pleased with lip service. Many say in that day, Lord, Lord, have we done this in your name and that in your name. But he said, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. He said, they confess me with their mouths and their lips, but their hearts are far from me. When you come to take communion, you let it be with your heart. It's a holy sacrament to the church. And we're to take it until the day of the Lord, until the Lord comes again. Now, it doesn't tell us the frequency in which we have to take communion. If you notice, some churches, like the Catholic Church in particular, they take communion every Mass. The Bible doesn't tell us we have to take it every Mass, but it said, but often as you do, it must be in remembrance of who? Jesus the Christ. The one who got you out of jail. Look at your neighbor and say, the one who got me out of jail. That's a substitute for that H word. Jail is a substitute word for that H word. Just, I see some little children in the place. But it's important for you to understand how sacred and holy it is. You know, we were talking about the blood, the power of the blood. It's not just the blood. It's the sacrifice that the man who had that blood offered himself up. And that tomb is empty now. Isn't it? When you take communion, you need to know that. He laid his life down for you. He who knew no sin he gave up his life for a sinner. How many are you willing to die for a mass murderer? Didn't get no hands. What about a bank robber? Fornicator? A thief and a liar? That's what he did for us. 
He died for mass murderers and thieves and robbers and fornicators and, yes, and drunkards and homosexuals. He says, such were some of you. Not who you used to be because of me. That's what he's telling you. So he said, I don't care where you go, what you do, whenever you come before me with that bread and that wine, you need to know that's a representation of me. That, that, that bread represent my body and that wine represent my blood. Unlike some of the Catholic friends of mine, they believe that when that wine and that bread is prayed over, it actually becomes the blood of Jesus Christ. Look at your neighbor and say, it's not so. They call that substance transiation. Then along with Martin Luther, he, he, he broke away from the Catholic Church and he started the uh, Lutheran Church. And he believed that the Spirit of the Lord is present in the communion. But this is what we believe, and this is the standard for most Orthodox Christians, is that we believe is symbolic. The body, the bread is symbolic of Christ's body and the blood. The wine is representative of his blood. Look at your neighbor and say, the wine represents blood and the bread represents his body. And so they, they took my Lord. At his last supper, he was betrayed by one of his own. Isn't that how it usually goes? One of your own. One of your trusted faithful. But he didn't fool the Lord because the Lord said, haven't I chosen you 12 and one of you has a devil? Judas, the son of prediction. Judas betrayed Christ. It would have been better for Judas not to be born than to betray Jesus. And he betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver, which is the price of a slave. 30 pieces bought you a slave back there. They gave him up for the price of a slave. Wouldn't you think that after Judas saw Christ raise the dead, walk the water, feed the multitude of thousands, the blind man see, blind Bartimaeus, never before in the Old Testament had a man been healed from blindness. Christ healed the blind. Then he calmed the wind and the sea. Peace be still. They said, what matter of man is this where even the wind and the sea obey him? He's fully man and fully God. This is what they see. He cast out demons. He called Lazarus, who had been dead four days from out of the grave. And you chose to betray him for 30 pieces of silver. The Bible said, what profit a man to gain the world if he loses his soul? King Charlemagne and all of his wealth and glory, when he died, they had him fixed up in a standing position with his fingers pointed at the Bible with those passages of scripture, what profit a man to gain the world. What it means is what he's saying, all that stuff means nothing. Only what you do for the Lord will last. While you have breath, you better praise him. You still got hands, you better clap for him. You still got feet, you better stomp some for him. Because tomorrow is not promise. And if you're going to come before the Lord, come right. Come with your heart right. He gave himself as a ransom for you. Your sins have been forgiven as far as the east is from the west. As far as the east is from the west. He give unto you eternal light. He said they should never perish. Yes, the Holy Spirit begin this work in you. Shall perform it to the coming of Jesus. Isn't it good to know that you got a God that can go the distance. And will. And will. When I take communion, I think about them boys in the fiery furnace. I think about Christ's death, but I think about his goodness, too. I think about his suffering. Even in his sorrows, he was blessed. And I want you to know this, too. Some of you going through some stuff. This is the time of year where people go through a lot of stuff. So financial stuff sometimes, the death of a loved one. It, it go, but God is faithful. And he's faithful. And if your loved one was a believer, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And in his presence is the fullness of joy. He said, I go to prepare a place to where I am. They may be also. Why do you prepare a place for me? Because I love you so much. I want you wherever I am. 
He said, nothing shall separate us from the love of God. Not sorrows, not death, not a bad time, not a bad day, not a car accident, not a robber, not a thief or a burglar. He said, nothing shall separate us. There's no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. When I, think, when I take communion, I think about salvation. I think about an empty tomb. I think about a man who stretched his arms or stretched out and they ran spikes in him. He didn't murmur or complain. You've been driving the stakes to me. I've been like, hey, my brother. Hey, hey, whoa, pump the brakes. Hey, where all the people I healed at? Where y'all? Hey, come on, man. Wouldn't you think so? Hey, Blind Bartimaeus, where are you at now? Hey, what about the guys on the boat? You see me calm the wind and the sea. What about the man who had the messed up hand? What about the guy who couldn't get into the pool? Where were they at? You know why the world has influence? And sometimes the world has influence on us as shameful as it is, it's true. But I'm gonna tell you, God is bigger than the world. And his promises outweigh your problems. So when you come to Jesus, come right. When you come to take communion, come believing. He is not slacking his promises concerning you. That tomb is empty. Jesus is Lord forever. I told him if I die, you know what you can write on my headstone? Jesus is Lord forever. Well, what's the guys? Don't matter what my name is. It's about his name. When you take communion, you remember he offered himself as a sacrifice for you. He who knew no sin for a sinner, the just for the unjust. They beat him up, 39 stripes, crown of thorn on his head. They tell me, when my studies, I found out the average crown of thorn contains 72 thorns, the sticks in your skin. And they can go down over a half an inch. They stuck that on his head and mocked him and slapped him. Can you imagine a foolish person would smack God in the face? Isn't that crazy? And while he did it, he still walked it out. Some of us, we can't take a bad day. We, we good as long as the wind is taking us that way. But let the storm come. We're like, woe is me. You see what our Jesus went through to get to you. You got to be able to take a storm because the Lord said anything that you can see is temporal. Anything that's before you, it can't outlast. Sometimes you just got to sit down and just let your problems go past you. Some of you run to your problems. Run through them, not to them. When you partake in communion, you show the Lord's death to he come. You must remember what he has done. Yes, he died. Can you imagine dying for the unjust? Think about it. How many of you got some relatives that you just, you know, you help them fight, but after so long, you cut that train off? <laughs> if you ever had some relatives like them for money and stuff, the Lord don't run away. With all our little problems, all our little shortcomings, our little hardships, we can still pray to him. He'll still protect us. He'll still care for us. It don't mean we get to do anything we want to because he that began this good work in you, it conforms you to his image. God is faithful. He is good. He is strong. He is mighty. So when you take communion, you need to remember you're not who you used to be. Yes, remember he wrote your name down in the Lamb's Book of Life. It's very serious when you get baptized when you take communion, and I want you to remember this. You can dedicate kids. Some people dedicate kids that's grown. They still ain't saved, though. You got to confess the Lord to be able to take communion. If you don't, wrong answer. Hello? We don't baptize infants because no infants were baptized in the Bible. Were they? I don't know where they came with that from. I really don't. But what I do know is this. God give us instructions. We got a Bible in front of us. We can read for ourselves. So all of us should be reading our Bibles because that's, that's what helps you to grow up. 
If you only read your Bible when you get to church, you're in special ed. It's important for you to study that word to show yourself approved. If you only wait till you get to church to read it, you're going to stay behind. Look at your neighbor. That's real. You got Bible studies, Sunday schools, all kind of programs, all kind of books and things you can read. You got to be serious about this God. This God has given everything up for you. He left the comforts of heaven. And now I want to share this passage of scripture. I'm going to close out this because we had to take communion. But we got to be serious when we come before the Lord, take a communion. It's, it's a real serious matter. Here in the Gospel of John, chapter 17, this is Christ's longest prayer in the Bible. And it, with this prayer, this is when he's about to be offered up as a sacrifice for the sin of the world. He was troubled because he never had to taste this before. But in verse 5, this is what he said to his father. He said, Oh, now, he said, and now, O oh, Father, glorify me with thy own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. He's trying to get back home. It's time for me to be glorified. I'm laying my life down. Some people say, well, Jesus only had his start in the manger. Wrong answer. The Son of God, he who was, is, and is to come. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Fully man, fully God. And just to show you, he didn't start with Mary. It says, I want to get back to the glory that I had with you, with thee, mean more than one, for the people who want this want to say that Jesus, the Father, and the Son, the Holy Spirit is saying, that's not correct. He said, with thee before the world was. Listen to this. Go to verse 23 and we'll close with this. I love Jesus sometimes. Sometimes I just feel like just running. Or I'd be just driving. I think about his goodness. It caused me to weep. Not tears of sorrow, but tears of joy. You don't have to. I don't need a cheerleader to praise the Lord. Here in verse 23, this is one of my favorite passages, verses in the entire Bible when it compares how much God loves us. I can't think of no scripture, no verse that stands out more than this one. And trust me, I've been through the Bible a whole lot of times. And guess what? I'm going to keep going until the Lord take me out of here. There's no backup plan. Listen to this. This is Christ's longest prayer I told you in the Gospel of John, chapter 17. He says, I in them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, from unity, that the world may know that thou hast sent me and thou hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Jesus Christ is telling you God the Father loved you with the same love that he has for his son, he has for you. It's the same. Some of y'all still like this. I'm like, I'm like, what? What would y'all wait for the Lions to win one or something? What is it? What do it take for you to be excited about the Lord? You as a sinner, a thief, and a robber, a liar, a fornicator. He loved you with the same love he has for his son. God love is wide open. He don't have just a little love or a small amount of love. He loved you with the fullness, the same love that he loved Christ. He loved you. Remember that when you come to the altar to take communion.